Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where OP ruins a kid's Christmas. Are you selling your TV? Yes, I am, but I've already been offered the full amount, $340 by another person, so you would have to top that. Okay, how does $200 sound? I'm sorry, that won't cut it. I just told you that it would have to be more than $340. Help a stranger out! I just went through a divorce and money's tight. Sorry to hear that, but I have a buyer already paying full price. You're an inconsiderate piece of garbage who has no compassion for anyone. I offered a fair price and you rudely rejected me. I hope your TV never sells. What? The guy literally just said that he has a buyer. What is this person talking about? I think I'm starting to get a sense of what may have contributed to this guy's divorce. Like, is this person entitled or just plain stupid? The guy literally said you would have to be 340 and he's like, okay, well, how about 200? Does he just not listen to any words that come out of other people's mouth and just assume that it's all things that he wants to hear? Today, my husband took me to eat lunch for my birthday. Usually at that restaurant, you get a free gift and I was looking forward to my new mug. But today, I was handed a tree ornament. Let's just say I was not happy. We've been to the Nordic Lodge five times this year alone, and to be handed an ornament was like a slap in the face. And then the restaurant replies, Very sorry, the free gift was not to your liking. These ornaments were custom made for us to provide our guests with a lasting memory to display any time, but particularly during the holidays when the restaurant is closed. It's unfortunate that our good intention and what we consider was a very thoughtful gift was not appreciated. Rather than feeling that way, perhaps it could have been left for the next receiver to enjoy. Have a wonderful day, Denise. Our next Reddit post is from Jinza. So, I work for a large international upscale package holiday company. For the winter, our biggest seller is the ski catalog. I work in the sales department, so I'm constantly getting people asking for discounts or people saying they have a travel blog and they'll review us, so clearly they deserve a free holiday. We are fairly pricey, so none of this is even rare. Today, my manager pulled me into their office because a customer I sold a fairly expensive holiday for was fuming. I actually expected to be told that I made an expensive mistake, but instead, my manager thought that I would enjoy the whole story. I vaguely remember that she had complained that it was too expensive, but she didn't want any of the cheaper alternatives. She had booked one of our more expensive resorts and told me that she would leave the youngest of her three kids at home, age 5, because she would be too young to enjoy it properly. Again, it's not unusual to leave a child or two with the grandparents, but I thought that she must be a bit mean to leave her daughter out for Christmas. As it turned out, she had taken the youngest child anyway and smuggled her into the resort somehow. Staff at the resort became suspicious when she asked for about 10 pillows and another blanket. After investigating this, she was confronted and was told that she had to pay. Apparently, I had told her that it would be fine to take the child into the room. I didn't. And when they checked the recordings and found out that she was lying, she turned on the waterworks, begging to be allowed to stay due to the spirit of Christmas or whatever because she couldn't afford the extra child's price. The resort's general manager eventually allowed her to stay, but only if she would pay about 900 pounds, which is roughly 60% of the actual cost, which she did. Now, this should be the end of the story, but it isn't. After coming home, she sent an email to our back office demanding a refund of the 900 quid that she spent because the whole experience had ruined her family's Christmas. We said no. Is anyone else wondering how they managed to smuggle a small five-year-old kid into the room? Because my guess is that they just stuffed her into a really large suitcase and just wheeled her in. Yo man, what's good? Your tats are fire, but you could really use more followers. I'm an up-and-coming influencer and model, and I would be willing to collab and shout you out on my Instagram and get you tons of exposure and trade for some ink. I want two arm sleeves, but we can discuss that later. Let me know. Lol, okay. Exposure doesn't pay the bills, my guy. I've tattooed plenty of people with more reach and influence than you, and they don't ask for free stuff. Also, you've got less than one-fifth the followers that I do. How about you do some free stuff for me in exchange for exposure? Let me know. I'm not big into tattoos. I don't I don't have any tattoos, but aren't aren't arm sleeves like super expensive? How much is an arm sleeve? A half sleeve tattoo is 1 to 2k. A full sleeve tattoo is 2 to 4000. 
geez, Louise. Okay, so if you double that, it's four to eight thousand dollars of work that this guy expects OP to do <laughs> for for awful exposure. Okay, all right, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty ridiculous. Man, eight thousand dollars. That is that's like straight up a two month salary. And this guy's supposed to do effectively two months worth of free work for pathetic Instagram exposure. Yeah, okay, okay. On this next post, OP is selling an $800 drone for $400 to get some Christmas money. Then he gets a response from this person. $100 for the drone, cash, I come to you? Sorry, I can't go that low. Come on, it's for a seven-year-old for Christmas. Honestly, I think this drone may be a bit advanced for a seven-year-old. Do they have any experience with drones? It uses a phone and an actual remote slash joystick. I think I know what my kid can handle. Deal or not? I'm sorry, no deal. Good luck though. Thanks for ruining a kid's Christmas, butthole. I hope you enjoy being a Grinch. Hey, you too, dude. I sincerely hope your kiddo has a glorious Christmas. This has absolutely nothing to do with the post, but I'm getting a drone for Christmas. My wife asked me what I wanted, and I want a drone, man. They look so fun. So she's getting one for me, and I just wanted to share it because I'm super excited to get it. Room for rent, $200 utilities included. The room is 11 and a half feet wide and 19 feet long. I'm in search of a female roommate for my mom. She lives in a 1,500 square foot home in Somerville that we recently renovated. The bedroom has its own private entrance and has a ton of space. It's connected to the laundry room. Requirements. Must be willing to help her keep the house clean. Yard work, random things around the house, pick up her groceries, occasionally drive her to appointments, etc. She doesn't drive anymore. Applicants will need to fill out an application, provide two living references and one work reference, and be willing to have a criminal background check. The ideal applicant would be a certified nursing assistant or a traveling nurse. Not required, though. <laughs> and then, down in the comments, this person is absolutely getting roasted. A room for rent? With all these requirements, I believe you should be giving the room and $200 for a female roommate, which is more like a caregiver. So, a live-in caregiver that has to pay you? Hmm. This is the funniest trading page I've ever been on. Everything on here is a joke. And what if that person has a job? She can't do all this stuff. How can this person pay you rent when they're a full-time caregiver? That's what I was thinking, lol. Where's the $200 they have to give you coming from if they're taking care of her mom and driving her to appointments every day? It is not a caregiver position! Are you going to the store for yourself? Then pick up her groceries too. You're gonna use the same toilet and kitchen, so clean it. If you have some free time and can help her get to appointments in her own vehicle, then be a nice person. If you're not interested, then don't comment. Don't be rude because it wouldn't work for your lifestyle. Plenty of other people are interested. Down in the comments, Government Stole My Toad gives a really good example of what living in this situation is actually like. This is very similar to what I went through once. Only, I had to pay 600 bucks for the room that didn't even have an actual air conditioner and was just a converted garage. I had access to the kitchen and bathroom, of course, but the lady expected me to keep the door leading to my room open at all times. When I moved in, I was told that I would have to help out with cleaning and such. Okay, that's understandable. However, she literally wanted me to clean pretty much everything and do all the yard work. I lived there for a month and it was terrible, but I was desperate. I was literally one day away from being homeless thanks to my family kicking me out. I was a single mom to one and a half year old twins. I remember when university was about to start back up for me and my job, the lady was expecting me to clear out all the leaves in her backyard. She wanted me to basically clean everything back there. It was a heavily treed backyard, so it was gonna be hell. She said to me, I don't know how you're expecting to go to school full time, work part time, manage two toddlers, and do the work that this place needs. That's when I left. She accused me of stealing stuff from her attic, which I had never been up to before, but I had the entrance in my room. Thankfully, I only stayed there one month, as the week before school I was contacted about getting into the family housing on campus, but man, it was terrible. Are you a coach, editor, publisher, or published author? Would you like a serious project to spend some time on? I'm looking for an unpaid, experienced volunteer, no compensation, to coach me in editing and publishing my completed manuscript. 
This position is remote, unpaid, and would be on a free, volunteer basis. You must have fiction publishing or editing experience to be considered as an applicant. A serious commitment to completing the book in a timely manner is expected. Your contribution will be added to the acknowledgments and or dedication. The book is approximately 65,000 words. It is complete, but it needs editing, proofreading, coaching, and formatting. I've received a feedback-based rejection letter from a publisher slash editor stating the idea was interesting, but the writing had some common mistakes and could use some work. The feedback was very constructive and helpful, but I need more than a one-page email to put the feedback into action and make it a finished work that can be published. Hence, experience is required for consideration. References or information confirming your credentials and experience will be requested. So, the way this post is written is giving me a pretty good idea of what his book must sound like. The guy just repeats the same word in like four or five different synonyms in a single sentence. He says, this position is remote, unpaid, and would be a free, volunteer basis. Like, saying unpaid is the same thing as saying free, which is the same thing as saying volunteer. The night was dark, shadowy, and also not very bright. A man walked through the night. He was handsome, attractive, and good-looking. Suddenly, someone shot him, and then he was dead. Completely not alive anymore. Dead as a doornail. Completely unalived. One moment he was alive, the next he was dead. His life just gone. Gone forever because death, once it happens, is totally permanent. Because that's what death is. It's a permanent transference of life to death. Which made this guy dead. Question, why does collaborating with an animator include paying them when I don't really want to pay? I'm trying to make an anime YouTube series, and I find it hard to find an animator because they usually ask for money, which personally I don't want to do. Because I don't even know how to give money digitally because I only spend money in real life situations. I'm not bragging by saying that. And therefore, I have to try to teach myself how to level up my drawing skills and trying to animate, which is really tough and hard for me. And when I ask people if they could help me on this project, they usually ask for money, and I say, sorry, but I don't really do that. And then they say that I'm rude or scamming, and that's not what I meant. I feel kind of bad making fun of this guy because he sounds like he's probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years old. But this guy wants to start an animated YouTube channel when apparently he doesn't even know how to draw, let alone operate online websites. So good luck, buddy. Hi all, my name is Erica. I am starting over with nothing but some clothes. I'll be staying with friends until I can rebuild all the necessary supplies needed to run my own household again. I have a two-bedroom apartment on hold in the downtown area for the second week of December. However, before then, if I can't gain access to my storage unit that my now ex had claimed to have been paying, I need everything for all rooms except for a BES for the smaller room. I need the following. And this list is absolutely massive, so I'm going to try to speed read this. Queen or King mattress with box spring and or frame. Pots, pans, cooking utensils, plates, bowls, cups, microwave, toaster or toaster oven, coffee pot or French press, blender, silverware, twin blankets plus bedding for whatever size of other bed I get, and pillowcases, pillows. Coach slash love seat slash sectional slash futon, preference given to futon. Two floor lamps, coffee table, high back tall bar stools times two. Bistro style table with two chairs or stools as well. Two TVs of any size. If it's not a flat screen, I would prefer if someone else carried it into the house because I have an umbilical hernia and I can't lift well. Gaming system of any type, even the new old school digital gaming systems that you can now get. Laptop. I work as a cam model until my laptop was stolen by a so-called friend. Two halogen lamps for doing cam work. Multiple long multicolored LED light strands with a remote to control the different speed modes, also for my cam show. 24 feet of chain. Two full sheets of construction grade plywood. Three to five sheets of 8x4 particle board cut into 4x4 sheets each. Miscellaneous household hand tools. Two or three large dressers. Two large plastic shelving systems. Small wheeled computer desk. Adult coloring books and markers. Large wooden bookshelf. Large black or chocolate brown cube shelf. Wicker drawers, papas and chair. All items must be free, near free, or really cheap. I take care of a challenged family member at the moment, a paranoid schizophrenic, and I need to get and keep him stable ASAP. Thank you. 
Do I even want to know what she wants to use the 24 feet of chain for? Is it, is it to chain up her family member while she does cam shows? This, <laughs> this next post is just a picture of a resume, and it reads exactly as follows. Megan blank, authorized to work in the US of A, willing to work three to five days a week, very dependable, must be off by 3.30 every day, and the earliest I'm willing to work is 10 a.m. Cannot work with mayonnaise. It grosses me out. And that, <laughs> that's it. That's the entire resume. Request, I'm in need of a live Christmas tree. I am recovering from filing bankruptcy, so I can't afford one. But this is my first Christmas in a place of my very own, and I'm hoping someone can help. Then she posts a picture of a live Christmas tree, which I would guess is like maybe four feet tall, maybe three and a half. It's not huge, but it's, you know, a mini Christmas tree. I have a free tree. It was given to me, but it's not the kind of tree I want, so I'm passing it on. I still need a tree if anyone has one that's taller and fuller. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like this is the spirit of Choosing Beggar Christmas perfectly summed up in two individual Facebook posts. That was r slash choosing beggars, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.